it over to you and give us a CEO update. Where are we at? What, what's happening at NASA? Are we still open for business? All right, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are in the country. Uh, thank you for joining us here today. Um, these are unprecedented times. You know, we haven't had a global pandemic in any of our lifetimes, and we haven't as a society had the kind of um, changes that we've undertaken as Americans over the course of the past week. Um, but, you know, one of the key things to being part of an association, a professional association like NAFA, is the fact that we are a community. And so in times like these, much like every other time, it's an opportunity for us to come together, to share ideas, to support each other. And, uh, and I think the one thing I want everyone on this, uh, this webinar, I'm sorry, this uh, town hall meeting to know, and anyone who watches this afterwards, is to know that NAFA's got your back. And our entire team of volunteers and staff are working around the clock with policymakers and others to make sure that, again, you all as advisors can do your jobs well during these turbulent times. You can still reach out and serve your clients. And we want to best prepare you to be able to, uh, to do that. So again, like, like Cammie mentioned, uh, the town halls that we're doing this week will involve a lot of conversation, tips and tricks and ideas and things that can help you continue to do your business. But also please know that on the policy arena, we're working every single day with um, our leaders at the state and federal levels to make sure again, that you are protected, that your business can prosper, that you can serve your clients. And that uh, at the end of the day, when this uh, pandemic ends, we'll all emerge strong. Um, and again, that's the kind of work that a professional association like NAFA does every single day on your behalf. Um, so we'll get through this and we'll get through this together. And if along the way you can think of things that we can better do as your professional association to support you and other advisors, please let us know because we wanna be responsive uh, to you and to your needs, uh, much like we are on a daily basis uh, around the clock. Um, so a couple things I wanted to update you on and you see on the, the, the slide in front of you. And that is that, uh, we are in constant contact with folks as this pandemic continues to, uh, to, uh, to work its course throughout our country. Um, NAFA is a member of FEMA's a National Business Advisory Board. So we're involved in communications with them on a regular basis. We, uh, we meet with White House officials almost daily. We're invited to the White House briefing webinars to bring us up to speed with, again, what the federal government is doing. And that goes more than what you just see on these coronavirus task force uh, type meetings, but we're actually on in-depth meetings with their, uh, their public liaison office um, as part of their financial services advisory team uh, to keep in constant contact with what's going on nationwide to provide feedback as appropriate. In fact, um, you can see on our website letters and communication that we have sent to leaders in Congress, as well as in the White House about the economic impact of the decisions that they're making and what they can best do again to ensure that uh, this sector uh, continues to do well and we can continue to help Americans be better financially prepared for their futures. Um, we're working with our federal and state legislators, letting them know that, hey, NAFA members are a resource to you. And so when you're getting contacted by constituents in your, your district um, about financial concerns they've got, they can always look to a NAFA member that can help them, that can reassure them, we can help make sure they've got the right solutions in place so they're best protected throughout life. And you might have already seen on the various Twitter feeds that are out there, a number of members of Congress have actually tweeted out hey, in times like this, if you want to make sure you've got together a solid financial plan, reach out to a member of NAFA. And on all of our public-facing sites, meaning financialsecurity.org, uh, et cetera, there is a find an advisor locator feature in which folks can, can go on that site and they can, again, get connected with a NAFA member in their community that can help them, again, make sure they've got the right financial plan. Um, so policymakers are taking that service very well. Uh, they are promoting what we're doing. Uh, and they also understand that when you've, they've got questions about stuff, just steer them to NAFA because we'll put them in touch with someone who can help them put together the right plan. Um, you might have noticed that you're, this is my condo uh, in Arlington, Virginia. And so the entire NAFA staff, no matter where they're located right now, is working remotely because uh, we want to, of course, do our part as good citizens to help safeguard against the spread of the coronavirus uh, and help sure that uh, all of our members, I'm sorry, all of our staff members are safe and protected. Uh, and so, you know, we're still working full time and we're still doing our jobs. We're just doing it from different offices than what we normally do. Uh, but again, if you need something, just contact us as normal. We're here for you, just like we are, whether we were in Falls Church or in Iowa or located wherever we were on the country. Now we're just located in 60 different offices around the country uh, from working from our own homes. Um, we're still there. Um, we've been continuing to 
uh, update and keep, uh, keep in touch with our NAFA volunteer leaders around the country uh, through regular webinars and our chapter staff members around the country to let them know what's going on. Hopefully you guys are receiving the various uh, e-newsletters that have been going out, um, talking about our response to COVID-19, talking about resources that are available for uh, <clears throat> each of our members to access, uh, and again, keeping them informed as to the routine AFA business uh, that's going on. Uh, if, you, if you haven't seen any of that, just let us know. We'll be sure to resend a copy of the newsletters to you, or of course, continue to check out our website, nafa.org, which has up-to-date information all the time. Um, over the course of the next two months, we are really recommending that all of our chapters, both local and state, do their activities, but do their activities in a virtual sense. Again, we wanna make sure that our members are safe, that they are protected, that we can best ensure that they do not contract the virus and if they've got it, so they can get over it and then also pass it on to others. So we're requesting like uh, during the months of March and April and probably through May uh, that all of our events be held virtually. Do your activities, do your events, but make sure your people have an opportunity to visit the way we're visiting today um, in a virtual sense as opposed to face-to-face -face until we get past this. And as always, we will continue to monitor the feedback and guidance from our public health officials to help steer our decision-making, whether it comes to um, chapter events or whether it comes to NAFA events itself. And so you see NAFA Live um, for the this year, we're gonna do those activities all virtual as well. So instead of doing NAFA Live and broadcasting it from a chapter meeting, and then having watch parties all around the country. Instead, we're asking, we'll, we'll broadcast it from one location, but we'll ask that each of you log on and watch that virtually. And so we'll have individual watch parties around the country, around the country. To group watch parties around the country. Uh, but we do wanna make sure that we can continue to provide uh, that needed service and provide good quality educational programming. We'll just do it virtually. Um, so we'll continue to do that with NAFA Live. And a lot of folks have asked about the Congressional Conference, which is scheduled for May 19th through 20th. As you all know, it's the largest legislative fly-in in the industry. Um, it's an event where we bring 600 to 1,000 NAFA members each year to visit our members of the House and the Senate and talk about uh, public policy concerns and how it impacts your clients and better help educate them so they can make the right public policy decisions. Um, at this point, the Congressional Conference is still on, but we are monitoring the situation daily and uh, again, our first and foremost concern is making sure that our members are safe. And so we're gonna continue to follow the guidance of the CDC and other public health officials on that. Right now, their guidance says, don't hold meetings of more than a handful of people until May the 10th. We fall outside of that window, but of course, as you all know, guidance is changing every single day. So stay posted because the status of the Congressional Conference may very well change. Uh, but right now, as of this moment, it's still on uh, for May 19th and 20th, but stay tuned. Um, and of course, if we do have to, for some reason, cancel or postpone the Congressional Conference, for anyone who has signed up, uh, you'll be of course given an option to have your, your full refund of your registration fees because it's just the right thing to do. Um, if we do cancel uh, the event and you would like to donate your registration fee to IFAPAC or to the war chest or something else we can use in the public policy arena, you also would have that option as well. Um, but more to come on that when a final decision is reached regarding the Congressional Conference. Uh, by the way, we do intend, because we know everybody needs to plan, to make a final call within the next two weeks. Uh, so you'll find out about it as soon as we um, get the most up-to-date guidance and make an educated decision as to how we can be impactful if we were to go to Capitol Hill and also making sure that our members are safe. So a lot of stuff going on there. Um, please know that, you know, we're, we're still here, we're operating, we've got your back, we're monitoring things every day. In fact, in many ways, we're monitoring things at a feverish pace because we're working on Saturdays and Sundays too, as this thing continues to evolve, uh, to make sure that you are best postured to be successful in doing your jobs and that you have the tools and resources you need to be successful in this type of new reality that we're living in for the time being until this virus passes. Um, so again, thanks for your, your dedication to the profession, to this association and to your clients. Um, and again, thanks for your support of NAFA. Wonderful. Well, thanks, Kevin. Uh, Suzanne is on with us, and Suzanne is our Vice President of Marketing. And, and Suzanne, talk to us about the tools and the resources that we've already put out and what we've already done, and show us where those can be found. 
Sure. Thanks, Cami. And uh, just to reiterate what Kevin said, because he brought up an excellent point. If for some reason you're not, if you've opted out of emails from NAFA or if you don't have that, please give us a call or send an email to info at nafa.org <clears throat> so we can get you resubscribed to that, especially in critical times like that. I know that um, there are quite a few people out there who uh, are no longer getting our emails. So that would be great for, I think, on many many a reason and then in doing that maybe you could update your profile as well in our new system and add in your cell phone number because we will be going to text messaging at some point uh, this year <coughs> as we can see even more important in times like that so i'm going to go ahead and share my screen as cami said and uh, get everybody acclimated to a uh, a couple of new um, tools we put out on covid19 so give me just a second while i do that And then uh, let me know when you can see. So let's let's first talk about our financialsecurity.org site and get everybody familiar with this. So this is our new consumer focused site. The it, it replaces advisorsyoucantrust.org, and uh, actually that site will just repoint over to this as of, of the end of actually this week. And so financialsecurity.org is something that we launched on February 4th of this year. And this again is, we've just started to populate it, but no time like the present to really kickstart it and then really do a call to action for all of our members to say, do you want to participate um, within this kind of initiative? And the initiative of course started with, let's go ahead and start to move the needle on financial literacy. But I think you can see in times like this, it's even more important that we can get out good, solid information to, um, to the consumer, to the overall public. And what better way to do that than to showcase our members. So we're looking right now for people to step up and make videos with us, et cetera. So before I get into that, you can see we've added something over here called resource kit. And then under here is the COVID-19 resource kit. So this is something that we are, we've put together extremely quickly. Um, you can notice again, as, um, as Kevin mentioned, the Find It Advisor. So if you're an active member paying your dues, this gets updated uh, twice a month. And your name should be in here. And if it's not, again, give us a call because we want to make sure that people are understanding that especially in times like, like this, you need a NAFA member to get good advice from. So we put down some um, frequently asked questions with here, and then under here, you've got uh, a whole slew of resources. We're actually gonna take these resources and continue to build these out into consumer topics that people would be looking for. And as we pull our content together, things like caregiving, you know, I have a multi-generational household, um, I'm thinking about college. So all of these pieces that will be affected, um, we have those topics out, and again, we're looking for support and your support in particular, so that we can do two things, both showcase you, as well as really give great uh, consumer information out there. And so that's, um, that's there. And then if we go over to our nafa.org site, you can also see that we have a kit as well. You can see we put this right here as a COVID-19 kit for NAFA's, NAFA members are ready to serve. The first time you go onto both of these sites, also you will see a pop-up. You'll only see it once a day, um, and that's by design. But this page, uh, in many cases, is giving the same type of resources, but as um, we were, as Kevin mentioned before, there you go. As Kevin previously mentioned, we have been putting, we put this together primarily so that we can put it in front of our policymakers, legislators, et cetera, so that people understand this is what you guys do every day. And so we've used that and we've gotten, again, terrific um, feedback from that, a lot of thanks, and we will continue to build that out as well. Um, lastly, I was going to show you one other thing that we will send out after this call. And can everybody see that page too? So the participating in financialsecurity.org, we were talking about making these direct to consumer videos. Um, we just did one with Jennifer Hodge about today, which is great. She's in the PNC space talking about um, business, um, business continuity insurance and, and whatnot, and whether that, what happens during this time frame. Um, 
we did this really easily by she just booked a time on account on Zach Hules and Andy Moyer have taken up this project. They have a, a ton of times open. You just book a time on their calendar. They'll do the Zoom recording for you. You just need to show up with your content and a couple minute video. We're gonna put that out to consumers so we can again, be very quick to market in doing that. You can also um, be a blogger. You can write articles with us, we, you know, please. And one other thing is we're trying to amass a resource kit for, um, for maybe you've put something out or your carriers put something out about giving resources out to uh, clients. We're trying to, again, put a kit together so that everybody has um, really great resources to pull from during this time in communication. So with no further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to, back to you, Cami. I think for you to introduce Brock. Well, Suzanne, we did have a question here. If you could oh, show sure. us, Judel Harrison is asking, um, where consumers can learn about scams? She has a legislator that's asking her, where can consumers learn about scams? Yeah, so at the moment, we're gonna build out that page further, but on financialsecurity.org, there is a, um, a section in there um, that has cybersecurity um, resources to look at to look at that. And actually we're gonna update it further. I just found a couple more today that are quite good too. So it's down within here, here's cybersecurity. And here's a resource library. Okay, so that's what thank you. Sure. And again, if we, you know, if we together, we can, we can always add more. We don't, we're not gonna run out of space in the digital world. Absolutely, absolutely. So thanks, Julie, for the question. The point of this is for us to all talk, interact, grow, and learn together as well. Um, Brock is on. Brock has been operating his business virtually. So Brock, tell us about your day. Tell us about your client meetings. How are you running your office and, and how is that working for you? Give people a sense of what you're doing. Yeah, thanks, Cami, and uh, great stuff, Suzanne and Kevin. Appreciate every, everything that everyone's doing. So, just a couple of things, um, and uh, welcome to everyone on here. I, I, it's it's kind of a cool format, and uh, you know we're doing a lot of things within our office as well as with clients, leveraging technology. And I think if we're looking for a silver lining in all of it, I think uh, this experience, while certainly nothing that any of us may have anticipated, and nothing that any of us would have thought to bring on, you know, I look at it and try to find those silver linings and say, how does it make us better? And so a couple of things, you know, as I'm thinking about this and as, you know, we talked about what content might be useful, just some observations that I think might be helpful. I, I think as an advisor and as a trusted resource to our clients, uh, I, I would think of four things that I think are critically important in this time. Uh, number one is, I would hope that every single one of you would be proactive. I think that there are going to be advisors out there who look at this as a two or four or six week vacation and kind of kick back and think, ah, you know, this will pass. I'm stuck at home, can't do anything. And I would hope that that's none of you. I think the more that we can be proactive, I think the better it is. You know, don't be scared to reach out to clients. Believe it or not, the fact that the stock market's down 35% is not your fault. Um, and clients understand that for the most part. Uh, I would even go as far as to say, if they don't understand it, maybe they shouldn't be a good long-term client of yours. Um, I think just the conversations that I've had, and I'll tell you, last week, I probably had about 100 client conversations. They genuinely appreciate you reaching out and taking the time to say, hey, I'm just checking in with you. Um, I would also say, don't worry too much about being scheduled. I've had, just today, I had, I had a NAFA leadership uh, executive committee call this morning. Uh, then I had a meeting with my team. I found that I had 40 minutes between the ending of that call and the start of this call. And I made three client calls during that time. So just being smart about how you're reaching out to clients um, and just, again, being proactive. Number two, I would say be a leader. All of us in this industry are so good at being leaders in our communities and in our industry. And I always say, and I've said to clients, I've said to my team, tough times never last, tough, tough people do. And I think that's really, really important. And just being a leader for these clients, our clients hire us to lead 
in good times and in bad. And I think that's critically important. And being able to be a resource. And sometimes that just means listening to them, right? Be an ear, a sounding board. I mean, so many people, they're like cooped up in their houses and they just want human interaction. I just this morning, one of the clients who I talked to this morning is a, an older woman. And she's basically on her own, lives by herself. I, I think she could have talked to me for about five hours if I had a letter. Um, but she really, I think, valued that human interaction. And we talked for about two minutes about her financial plan and probably 15 minutes just about what's going on with her family and this sorts of, these sorts of things. Number three, be empathetic. Um, people are scared. People are worried. People are worried about their kids. They're worried about their parents. They're worried about themselves. You know, there's a great commercial that I saw, a public service announcement that said, you know, the hashtag was alone together. Most of you have probably seen that. We're all going through this together. It's unique. It's, I mean, even when I'm talking to older clients, I, I'm trying to get them talking about, you know, have you ever seen anything like this in your lifetime? Nobody has. And, you know, this is sort of the new normal and it may last longer than any of us anticipate. I think the more you can just be human and not have your sales hat on, not have your advisor hat on necessarily, and not be robotic, I think can be super helpful. And then number four, and probably most important, be honest, right? None of us has a crystal ball. If you do, let me know because, you know, there's probably lots of opportunity there. But, you know, just being, in some cases, brutally honest that, um, you know, we've built financial plans that are designed for times like this. You know, I've got a, uh, some of you are familiar with the strategic coach program and I've done strategic coach for a number of years. My coach there is a guy by the name of Lee Brower and Lee has a, a quote or a saying that I've used quite a bit over the years. And he talks about gratitude and he says, always begin in gratitude. And he says, now there are going to be some tough times out there. He says, one of the things I've learned over my lifetime is you don't have to be grateful for everything that happens. And he talks about his son who actually was diagnosed and eventually passed away due to cancer at a very young age. And he says he wasn't grateful because of cancer, but he could still be grateful in his environment. And I think none of us has to be grateful because of the coronavirus. But if we can find those silver linings, if we can find those opportunities to be grateful and express gratitude to our clients, it goes a long way. And I think just being able to be nimble and adjust as necessary, that leadership uh, will come out in times like this. I want to just take a minute and talk about what we've done in our practice. Number one, uh, last Monday, we sent out an email to all of our clients and the prospects for whom we have email addresses. Just a pretty brief email. Um, and I'll talk about what the content of that was in a second. We've also, we've called all of our top clients, we've sent texts, we've used social media, just any way that we can communicate with clients, um, obviously in a compliant, friendly manner, but just trying to reach out and just let people know that we're thinking about them and that we want to be a resource for them. Um, and then also scheduling, I did 32 meetings last week as review meetings, um, reaching out to clients saying, hey, Obviously, the market's turned down. Let's talk about where we are and what it means for your portfolio, trying to control some of that panic. And the message across all of it, whether it's a, the, the email that went out to everybody, our calls, our texts, I think the key is consistency. People are looking for you to be a rock when, in many cases, I mean, look, this is, this is real stuff. This is people's life savings in some cases that they're concerned about. This is people, you know, in some cases, this is life or death, and we're talking to people about important things like their life insurance, their disability income insurance, their health insurance, their investments, et cetera. And so um, people are scared a little bit, and they want you to be that leader, that resource, that, uh, that stable influence in their lives. But I think the message is always consistent. Look, it's a unique time, and we're all going through it together. I've been talking to clients about just, you know, sort of a market update, what's going on in the capital markets. And I think too, whether you do this or not, whether you're in the investment side of the business or not, I think just making some observations around what's going on in the stock market, what's going on with, uh, you know, the capital markets, what's going on with interest rates, finding opportunities, 
right? Maybe talking to people about how, hey, you might want to look at refinancing your mortgage or, you know, just different things that you might think about doing. But also talking about the products, the strategies, the services that you do provide where you're continuing to provide value. For example, in my practice, my practice personally is a, is a pretty well diversified practice with investments and insurance. And I'm pointing out to people who have permanent life insurance that whole life insurance didn't lose a dime last week, right? In fact, whole life insurance has never lost a dime. If people have term life insurance that's convertible, we're talking about why converting to permanent life insurance may make a whole lot of sense. The other thing that we're reiterating is that we are open for business. I'm telling them, hey, our staff is primarily working from home, but all of our phones are forwarded, email is here, call us, email us, let us know what we can do to help. I'm also having conversations around, you know, what's going on with your kids? What's going on with your parents? How's your family? Are there other people in your life that I can be a resource for or to? Now, number one, I truly want to be empathetic and I want to help people. But the silver lining on that is we're finding opportunities where we can bring in new clients, right? The parents, the children, et cetera. There are opportunities to have conversations and be a valuable resource. Um, and I would just reiterate clients, you know, number one, a lot of them are like stir crazy, right? We're all, a lot of us are running, um, you know, homeschools from our dining room tables and dealing with our uh, spouses and our children in ways that <laughs> we didn't anticipate a, a month ago. And we're looking for adult interaction. And so I think, you know, just having those meaningful conversations. And then the last thing I would add is just how can you get better? Goal oriented people find ways and figure out how to get better in unique circumstances. You know, whether that means cleaning out your email inbox or following up on both the personal and the professional to do list, there's a great thing out there you can Google. It's called the Clean Sweep. It talks about all the things in your personal and professional life. I mean, it's amazing how productive I've been over the last 10 days because A, I can't go anywhere, and B, there's no sports on television. So, I mean, we're knocking stuff off the to-do list left and right. But focus on your health, focus on your business, focus on what's going on at home. I would also say a last thing, find opportunities. Maybe it's that professional designation that you've never had a chance to, to get knocked out. I draw your attention to things like NAFA's LA certification. Um, there's opportunities. And I think if you can be productive, be proactive, uh, be positive in this environment, it's going to go a long, long way. And when things do turn around, right, and I say when, because there's a great Winston Churchill quote, the pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity. The optimist sees op opportunity in every difficulty. This too shall pass. And what are you doing to move your business forward in these tough times? That's what I've got. Thanks, guys. All right. Awesome, Brock. Thank you to Brock. Uh, Brock's one of our very talented members. Um, he's on our executive committee. Thank you to Kevin as well for sharing and Suzanne. Um, if there's a topic that you all want to hear about, if there's something that you want to know about, we want to hear from you. If there's something that you feel like would be beneficial, let us know. We, we're looking for those things. If there's something that you're hearing, if you're hearing something about the industry, if you're hearing that um, there's a change, or if you're hearing about how companies are communicating with their clients or communicating with their agents, or if there's some news that we need, we want to be a resource. We want to gather those things together so that we'll have them all. Uh, as Brock said, this is a time for leadership to step up and to lead with this. Um, during these times, you either get bitter or you get better. And so I think that most all of you are goal-oriented, just like Brock talked about, you're high achievers. That's just how this business operates. You're goal-oriented, you're focused on the future. So now is the time for you to really step up and to move forward. And as we go through this together, because we are a community, this is a membership, um, as we go through this together and work through this, we want to hear from other great people. This is what we do every day. Every day we help our clients solve problems and work towards planning the future. It's not something new for us. This is a different time. This is a different application. But you all have the skills and the tools that we need. So as we go forward and as we hold these town hall meetings, thank you for participating. Thank you for the chat. 
Thank you for the chats on that. Um, thanks for putting forth your ideas on this. We want this to be a conversation. We want to learn from each other. Is there anything that anyone has left to share? Anything from Kevin, Suzanne, Brock, anybody else from the executive committee that they want to share before we go? Good. Look forward to visit with everybody tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Well, we will be back tomorrow. Jill Judd will be back tomorrow. She'll be talking about how to communicate with your clients. She'll be talking about how to interact with them and how to interact with family members, how to interact with staff. If you spend very much time with Jill, you'll know that this is an area that she is just very naturally gifted in, is in communicating with others. So with that, I will say goodbye, and we will talk again tomorrow. Yes, this is life at home. We got the dog in the UPS truck coming. Maybe they're bringing toilet paper. Who knows? But they're here. So thank you all, and we'll see you tomorrow.